Hey everybody, welcome back to 10% True. This is a departure from my usual video style because I'm not interviewing somebody. Instead, this is a candid review of the F15E Strike Eagle throttle grip and the F15EX Strike Eagle 2 throttle grip sets from Wing Wing. Wing Wing have provided these to me for free, but I'm under no obligation to say anything nice about them, and so this will be an honest and candid review of my time flying with the throttle grips over the last four or five days. Both throttle grips are made of aluminium using a high pressure casting technique. Uh, the surface is painted with an electrostatic paint and that effectively gives a nice texture and a realistic look. It also increases the durability and the scratch resistance of the throttles compared to something that is traditionally painted. Both of these throttles are part of what they call their twin shock experience, which means that each of them has, uh, each throttle, so left and right, one each has a little motor in there which vibrates when certain circumstances are met. Uh, and those are circumstances you can either program yourself in their software, which we'll talk about in a minute, or you can allow the sim that you're playing to define when that happens. So in my instance, I'm playing the F15E module in DCS and it will decide when the vibrations occur, typically when the speed breaks out or hit uh, an AOA number or a uh, rate of descent or something like that. So what's the main difference between the two throttles? Well, in a minute we'll do a button by button review and you'll be able to see exactly what the differences are. But a summary is that one has many more physical switches, that's the F15EX, and it has an additional two axes than the other. So the F15 E grip is the one that's most like the real grip you will find in the front cockpit of an F15 E and that has 38 physical switches, 17 buttons, three axes, one thumb wheel and three five-way hat switches. The EX grip and I'll be honest and say I've never seen a grip in the real F15 EX so I don't know if this is modeled on the real F15EX grip or if this is Wing Wing's interpretation of what it could be, I suspect it's that, has 57 switches. So 38 in the F15E grip and 57 in the F15EX grip. Um, 18 buttons, four axes, three thumb wheels and six five-way switches. So both of these throttles are designed to work with all of the Wing Wing bases. Uh, Wing Wing have a very modular approach. If you're not familiar with it, you buy the base, which can have switches and it might not have switches on it, but you attach the throttles to the base and then you uh, can simulate the airplane you're flying um, that way. If you don't have a base, you're not going to be able to do anything with these throttles. You need to have the base as well. If you've got a Super Taurus base, an Orion 1 base, or a Gemini base, you won't get all of the functionality from at least the initial batch of the F-15 E or EX throttle grips out of Wing Wing and I would suggest that you check their website to find out whether or not that's still the case. I don't know if that will change in the future or if it's a limitation that they have with production now but if you're a user of one of those bases and you're looking at this, these throttle grips then do go and check their website before you decide to buy. If on the other hand you're an Orion 2 or an Orion 2 10th anniversary limited edition um, base user then you're not going to have any issues. All of the functions that are on both of the throttle grips for the F15E and the F15EX will work with your unit. So who are these two throttles aimed at? Wing Wing are keen not to draw comparisons between the two units. They think that that's an unhelpful thing to do. Although, if I'm honest, it's only natural. And when I look at the commentary that's online, people are looking at both of these and wondering which one they should go for. What Wing Wing say is that the Strike Eagle unit, the F-15E unit, is ideal for enthusiasts or, or those people who are on a limited budget, whereas the Strike Eagle 2 is better for DCS players who enjoy multiple aircraft models and have more of a budget to spend. We're going to go through and look at the throttle units themselves and we'll do some playtesting and then at the end I'll summarise what I think is the case with both of those. But that's what Wing Wing are saying and that's their intention uh, in putting both of these products out there. Okay, so we've got the throttle grips unboxed. Let's have a little look and see what the switches are like then and what's different between the F15E and the EX setup that uh, Wing Wing have put out. The left-hand throttle grip for both the E and the EX is the same. So it features a spring-loaded three-position switch on the outside. Um, it has a I think this is a hall sensor uh, rotary dial with a center detent, 
but it's not spring loaded, spring loaded and it's not self-centering. So if I pull it up, it doesn't go back to the middle. Uh, but it has a fairly nice, satisfying click uh, when you get back to the center point. And then you've got two single press buttons here. And then this is uh, a five-way switch, which is up, down, left and right, and in. Um, and that has a limited range of travel. It's actually quite nice, um, but it, of course, is spring-loaded. So now we'll look at the right-hand throttle grips. And you can see uh, fairly clearly the difference between the F15E grip, which is this one here, and then the EX. Um, there's a much greater number of switches, and there's two additional rotary dials on the EX grip. But let's look at the E grip first of all. The F15E grip then is the one that is closest to the real life F15E uh, Strike Eagle right hand front cockpit grip. If you're in the rear cockpit, you don't get as many controls as this. I think you just get uh, the comm switch and the speed brake switch in the rear cockpit. Anyway, so for the wing wing set, then what have we got? Uh, we've got the TDC control with a, a TDC press button in the middle. Um, there's a four way switch here, which is spring loaded. Uh, in fact, it's five way because it also has a press in the middle. And we then have the comm switch, which is spring loaded also. It's a three position switch, so it's forwards and backwards. And then we've got the speed brake switch. The speed brake switch actually, the switch stays in the position that you leave it in. It's not spring loaded. So you've got forward, middle, and aft. We have the boat switch, uh, which is spring loaded, three position, so it's forward, middle, and aft. And then uh, we've got this switch down here, which is not spring loaded. So that is uh, going to stay where you leave it, which is uh, forward position, uh, forward, middle, and aft. Uh, and in the real aeroplane, that is the uh, weapon select switch. So aft is guns, middle is um, short range missile, and forward is um, medium range missile. So that's the F-15E grip. So this is the EX Strike Eagle 2 grip um, by Wing Wing. I have to say, there's a lot of things going on with this and I'm a little intimidated by it, but um, let's have a little look and, and see what you get. The main difference, I guess, from the front side of the grip from the um, F15E design is that you get two additional hall sensor rotary dials and these are self-centering. So. The one on the left outboard grip, that is not self-centering. That will stay where you put it. Uh, these two though, a teeny tiny one up here um, with a li very limited range of travel, also has a press um, and that is self-centering. So when I let go of it, you probably can't see it, but it pops up. And the same for this one down here. Uh, so this one, when I let go of it, it pops up. And again, fairly limited range of travel. Other than that, the front of it is exactly the same as the F-15E grip. So you've got a TDC with a press and then you've got this five-way switch here, which is up, down, left, right, and a press in. And of course it's spring-loaded. Looking at the inboard side of the F-15EX Strike Eagle 2 uh, front cockpit right throttle grip then, uh, we can see that they have deleted the uh, three-way speed brake switch of the F-15EX, which was this one here. And in its place, they have added um, two five-way spring-loaded switches. So left, right, or four aft, up, down, and in. And the same for the one behind it, up, down, left, right, and in. They've also removed the boat switch, uh, which was a three-way switch, which is this one here. Spring-loaded switch on the EF15E. And on the EX, you now have another five-way switch here, which is spring-loaded, so up, down, left, right, and in. Uh, but they've kept the weapon select switch, which is um, going to stay where you leave it, um, which has the three positions back, middle, and forward. Okay, just a really quick look at Wing Wing software then that comes with the throttle grips. Uh, it's called the Simap Pro. If you're already familiar with uh, Wing Wing products and the ecosystem and their software, you may want to skip this part. This is the first time I've used Wing Wing, so it's the first time I've seen the software. My understanding, and I'm not an expert in this, so you can leave a comment below if you have a differing view, is that you should really come into the software when you've got the grips in order to get the latest firmware. So I had to probably two or three times, I had to plug the device. I've got an Orion 2 base with the throttle grips. I had to plug it in a couple of times for it to see both the throttle grips and the 
uh, Orion 2 base. So it sees each throttle grip as a separate item. And um, that's the left throttle grip and the right throttle grip and then the base. So when you, when you bought these and you install them, run the software because it will update the latest firmware to the grips for you. And once you've done that, you then have the ability to go into uh, a little screen with a running timeline at the top where you can see the axes in action. So moving the throttles backwards and forwards, I can see the axes. Uh, I can make sure that everything is right uh, there, that there's no uh, peaking or no fluctuation or no spikes. Uh, I can also check all the switches. So at the moment, I've got the F15E um, grip installed, and I can see here on the comm switch, I'm moving the um, air brake switch, now the boat switch, and then finally the weapon select switch. And I can see each of those have um, being actuated at the same time. And also the TDC here too as well. So uh, I can rotate it through the full range of motion. I can see it here visually depicted to make sure that it's centering and that it's going to the extremes. Uh, and also I can see it up here in the timeline as well. You can also see down here, one of the things about this throttle grip is that it has the dual shock motor, which is this rumbling effect that, that occurs. Um, you can choose how and when it does it. I've got it set so that DCS determines, because I fly the Strike Eagle module in DCS, that will determine when the rumbling or when the dual shock actuates. But you can come in here and you can turn it on and change the intensity and make sure that everything is working. And set mode here, this is where you'll do it. Um, either default, which is allowing DCS to set it, or you can go to advanced and configure it yourself. And that's not something I'm going to go through because uh, if you're interested in this, then I'm sure you'll find the time to do that. The other interesting thing that's that's uh, helpful I've found here is, although I am told and I have seen for myself that it's best to go and do your actual key bindings in DCS, so go into the sim and set up your controllers within the game, um, the afterburner ratio can be set here. So I can go in and already have done for the F15 module and set it at 73%. So if you're using the finger lift kit, there's a little uh, nodule at the front which you can physically slide backwards and forwards that determines where the afterburner detent would be. Um, I've got mine set all the way forward, so there's only a small amount of movement. But in the sim, it's sometimes tricky to make sure that when I hit the afterburner stop on the physical throttles, it's hitting the same afterburner stop in the game. And so you can tune that here. And for me, 73% of movement is, is the right amount. Another thing that's, that's nice uh, in the software here, and it's worth pointing out. Uh, so for the F15E, there is one hall rotary sensor, and that's the one on the end of the left throttle grip. And you can see me moving around here, and, and it's set to be an axis. Uh, actually, it's set to be both an axis and uh, a switch at the moment. So when I when I reach the end of travel, it hits a stop and that actuates a switch. I'm not entirely sure what the applicability of that is, but um, you have the option of switching between that and, and just a pure axis mode. So I'm moving the elevation wheel up and down now, and it's going to the full extremes and to back to the center of the axis, um, or just a switch mode. So when it hits the center de uh, detent, it um, hits that switch, and if we go right to the top, it hits that one, and then right to the bottom, it hits that one, or back to dual mode here. And the EX grip, which has three, of those hall sense uh, rotaries is the same. You can s configure each of those to to um, behave in whichever mode you want it to. So that's the configuration part of the software. As far as I can see at the top, you can see a confirmation of uh, the firmware version you're using and um, the fact that it can see each of those three components. Um, you can also go into virtual device mapping, which I haven't tried at all, and I'm not going to bother reviewing for the purposes of the throttle grips, but if you're interested in that, I'm sure there's other information and other videos describing it. Uh, key binding, which you can allow um, to be set by the simulation, uh, as I have with the game DCS, um, or you can go in and set it up yourself. And again, uh, that's not something I'm gonna do. If you're a power user, then maybe you will, uh, but it's not for me. And then we've already talked about the uh, dual shock vibration motors again uh, i'm allowing the game to handle when the vibrations kick in and i'll talk a little bit about that when we actually go and do some of the uh, flying testing of the throttles uh, but you can come in here again and set whether or not you want to do the um whether or not you want to program it yourself down here um, or if you want to leave it in default and allow the game which is in this case dcs to, to run it which is what i'm going to do Okay, everybody, so we're in the cockpit of Rasband's F15E module in the DCS simulator. I've got the F15E grip 
um, installed on the Orion 2 base. Um, again, the base is not the uh, subject of this review, and so I'm not going to film myself using it. The grips themselves don't illuminate or anything, they're just handles with switches on them, so I'm not really sure if there would be any benefit to you seeing me manipulate them. Uh, but I'm going to try and talk you through what it is that I'm um, doing with them and what I'm seeing. And frankly, because all that we're talking about is some switches, there's not going to be much to discuss in that respect. But it'd be good to have a look and see what the vibration is like and the dual shock uh, functionality that comes straight out the can uh, in terms of what is set up in DCS um, and what triggers the vibration and how the, the vibration behaves. So the first thing I just noticed just then was that as my rate of descent increases, let's have a little look here. So at about 6,000 feet a minute rate of descent, um, the vibration starts and it's fairly gentle, but it's enough, I suppose, to get your attention. Let's increase the rate of descent and see if it intensifies. It doesn't really feel like it is intensifying, um, but it's a pretty good attention getter. So, angle of attack then, let's see what we get from that. We'll pitch up. And the AOA is going to build. And that one's going to roll. Okay, 23 degrees and the vibration started. It's off again now. Let's bring the AOA back. 23 degrees it started. Let's build the AOA and see what happens. So AOA is building, but the I wouldn't say that the intensity in the grips is building. It's definitely there, but I don't think it's built as the AOA is built. Let's try this. No. So we're now fully stalled, mushing through the air. And the vibration in the throttles has stayed pretty much the same. It's handy though. I like it. I wouldn't call that a gimmick. I'd say that's actually a pretty good yeah a pretty good little feature I don't know what the um, optimum AOA for flying the F-15E is in terms of in terms of sustained turn rate um, so I'll have to find out whether or not that is 23 degrees because if it is 23 degrees that's a pretty handy indicator that you're flying the aeroplane optimally um, if it's not 23 degrees then I suspect you can go into the software and you can manually change the AOA at which that um, vibration kicks in. So we're going to head to Aquatiri and do a landing and see whether or not we get any vibration through the different phases of the uh, landing process, i.e. gear extension, flap extension, touchdown, and then if there's any kind of rumbling that goes on when we're taxiing. But while we do that, uh, while we're en route, I'm just going to have a little play with the TDC and see how it compares to the third party TDC that I put on my Thrustmaster Warhawk throttle and that, that third party TDC I think comes from a PS4 it's very nice uh, I would say it's as good as if not better than it um, fairly easy yeah I mean this is the, probably the see, the smallest movement I can get out of it or the slowest movement I can get out of it something like this it's easy to do the, the pressure required to move the controller itself is nice so uh, lots of control there smooth in both axes and then because we're doing that let's have a little play with the rotary dial on the end of the left throttle which is the antenna elevation control and yeah so it appears to do pretty much the same as it does in real life which is the more you move it up and down the faster the rate of changes not really too much to say about that it's a rotary dial it works fairly easy to use okay so here we are nice bold tiger, tiger's jet let's see what happens then when the brake comes out there's a bit of vibration and let's see whether or not as I reduce the amount of brake the vibration lessens yeah it does so the vibration for the speed brake is graduated. So I've got a tiny bit of vibration now, and now it's gone. And the further the speed brake travels, the more vibration I get. It's a shame they couldn't have done that with the AOA. That would have been pretty handy if they had. But again, you can probably program it yourself. So we're going to put the gear down. 
No. And the gear's travelling, and we're getting a little bit of vibration through the handles, and that's stopped. Flaps down. No vibration from flaps, and there's no vibration coming through the stick at all at the moment. Okay, definitely some vibration there, and I bounced. Holding it off. There you go, some nice vibration there. Speed braking out, we're going to aero brake. There's some nice vibration coming through there as well. And now let's get on the actual brakes, see whether or not that makes a difference. Other than the fact they're very bad and they don't work very well. I think there's been a small increase in the amount of vibration coming in through the throttles there. Yeah, oh, there's loads of vibration when you tip a wing. <laughs> More vibration. Oh, yes, lots of vibration. Okay. Let's see whether or not there's any vibration when we taxi then. No. Doesn't, doesn't feel like there's any vibration. I wonder if there's any artificial bumps. No. Uh, there's a tiny bit of vibration coming in now, so we're at 23 knots. If I slow down, let's see whether or not... Yeah, so 22 knots um, ground speed, or 20, 22 miles an hour ground speed. That's when you get a little bit of vibration kick in. So that's kind of cool as well, so you can sort of carefree taxiing. Just look around and if you get too fast, the the throttle uh, grips will vibrate and tell you. That's pretty cool. What about braking then? See? Nah, no vibration there. Which is probably about right. So now it's time to wrap up and I'll share with you my concluding thoughts. Concluding thoughts then. I have to say I think this is a fantastic set of grips by Wing Wing. My personal favourite is the F15E grip set, which is the one that's installed here. I'm not a power user for DCS, and I don't get to play it very often, so setting up HOTAS and remembering HOTAS is a bit of a challenge for me. Uh, typically, I'll play from you know maybe sort of once or twice a month, uh, perhaps to even less frequently than that. And I think if you're a power user, if you're using DCS all the time, if you've got a fantastic memory, if you're a bit of a whiz when it comes to HOTAS in general, then maybe the EX Strike Eagle 2 grip set is for you because of the additional functionality, the two additional rotaries, and the additional five-way hat switches. The only caveat I would add is that they did decide to delete the speed brake switch. That's this on the e-throttle three-position switch, which is not spring-loaded, so you can kind of feel with your thumb when you're flying whether or not your speed brake should be up or down just by ba based on position of the switch. And they deleted that with the EX grip and replaced it with a five-way hat switch. So now, I guess if you were still setting this as your switch for your speed brake, you would want to just uh, periodically just push it forward to make sure that the speed brake was down. Or if you wanted to make sure that it was up, you would probably pull it back and maybe hold it back. So that's the only thing that I would say as, as an observation as to the design decisions that Wing Wing made. But other than that, I really like the dual shock. I, I use a Thrustmaster F18 grip, so it's a bit weird that the stick isn't uh, vibrating, um, but the throttle is. But I would keep that turned on anyway. I've heard some people say it's a bit gimmicky and they wouldn't use it. Um, for me, as somebody who has done a little bit of real-world flying, I can attest to the fact that there's a lot of seat the pants flying that goes on you feel a lot and your senses are important in helping you to fly the airplane or the helicopter whatever it is that you're flying and, and that of course when you're at 1g and zero knots in your living room or your study or, or your gaming room wherever it is you're flying your flights in it's something that you don't get so for me if the throttle starts to vibrate a little bit at you know 20 what 21 22 degrees angle of attack when i'm flying the strike eagle module in dcs or if it vibrates when i deploy the speed brake and then keeps vibrating until the speed brakes back down again uh, those are cues that i'm happy to take and, and embrace i said at the beginning of this video that i would talk a little bit about the realism in terms of how these grips compare to the real airplane 
The only difference really between the real F-15E throttle grip and the ones that Wing Wing have provided is on the left hand uh, throttle grip. Uh, and that is that this switch here in the Wing Wing unit is a five-way switch up, down, left, right, and then in. And in the real airplane, it's a single toggle switch. So it just goes in and that's it. It's called the left multifunction switch. Second difference is that Wing Wing have added these two little single press buttons here. They've kind of added them to the front of the throttle unit, um, which for me is a bit weird. I think they would have been better positioned underneath because they're quite tricky to feel when you're flying. And um, when your hand is on the throttle unit, at least for me, the ends of my fingers curl under here, and that would be an easier place to locate them to switch. Um, anyway, those are not on the real airplane, obviously. So you've got this switch here is different. Those are not on the real airplane. And then finally, this uh, rotary here, this hall sensor rotary on the uh, far outside of the grip. In the real airplane, it's spring-loaded. So uh, on the wing-wing unit, you put it here and it stays there. In the real airplane, it would um, spring-load and return to the center detent. Uh, and in the real airplane, what this does is it controls antenna elevation and specifically it controls the rate of change. So the further you push the um, unit down, the further you rotate the wheel down, the quicker the scan is going to change in elevation in the airplane. And then when you let go of it, the scan is going to stay, stay where you put it and the switch is going to return to the center. And I'm told actually in the real airplane, here's a bit of trivia for you, these things break quite a lot of the time. And so what what you have to do is you have to go to a short range missile or guns mode because that uh, recenters the elevation on the radar. There you go. Some in insider tricks and tips for you. So, in conclusion, I think if you're in the market for a new throttle grip set, um, then I would have no hesitation in recommending these two. I think they're fantastic. And similarly, if you're just looking for an insane amount of functionality and 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 usability for your HOTAS, for whatever module you're flying, and whether you're actually flying DCS or something else, a spaceship um, simulator or a space game or whatever, um, and you have a 21 pound brain and you can remember what all these buttons do, then go ahead and get the EX2 um, Strike Eagle unit. It's, it's very, very good. Anyway, that concludes my review of these two wing wing units. I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave us your thoughts in the comments below. Take care.